Hi, um, I'm Liz Schaefer and I'm the Vic Wells Association um, Membership Secretary and this film is a recording uh, based on the lecture that I gave at the Vic Wells Association um, Shakespeare's Birthday Party um, 2021, which was a bit different um, this year. So many things were a bit different this year. So um, Vic Wells Association usually holds um, a Shakespeare's Birthday event uh, close to the 23rd of April. Uh, which is also St George's Day, and which is traditionally identified as Shakespeare's birthday. Uh, but instead this year, in July, uh, we made a visit to St Mary's Paddington um, and had a party there. Um, so thanks very much to everyone at St Mary's Paddington for their hospitality. Um, and the reason that we went to St Mary's um, is because um, uh, in the graveyard, there is the grave of uh, Sarah Siddons, who's uh, famous as a performer of Shakespeare's plays in the 18th century, um, was an, um, paralleled. All right, so I'm just going to share my um, screen. Uh, okay, so Uh, that's my favourite picture of uh, Lillian Bayliss, uh, painted by Ethel Caban and um, with the famous green leaf that she asked everyone to leave on the bus or wherever they were going to publicise um, the old Vic's activities. So um, it was Lillian Bayliss who suddenly decided um, that uh, the old Vic was going to celebrate Shakespeare's birthday party uh, every year. Um, this was part of her rebranding of the old Vic as the home of Shakespeare during the First World War. Uh, in fact, the Old Vic did a whole range of plays by playwrights other than Shakespeare, um, but Shakespeare became regarded as the um, house playwright and Bayliss uh, put a huge banner up at, um, on the top of the theatre uh, declaring that the Old Vic was the home of Shakespeare. Uh, so Bayliss began celebrating Shakespeare's birthday um, in uh, real style after a wartime trip to uh, Stratford um, in 1916 for the quarter centenary of Shakespeare's death. Um, there were lots of um, uh, commemorations that year and the following year, Bayliss inaugurated the Old Vic Birthday Festival um, to, uh, with, with, with Shakespeare um, being toasted and the cake being cut. Um, and all kinds of um, extraordinary uh, rituals evolved. The very first Shakespeare Birthday Plus, uh, Festival took place on Monday, the 23rd of April, 1917. And it started at 2.30, we've still got the programme. Um, this birthday matinee included a guest appearance um, by Ellen Terry, who was um, quite mature by then, um, and many other stars. Later on, the birthday festival um, featured favourite scenes from Shakespeare, such as um, the so-called kitchen scene from Twelfth Night, which is the scene where Toby and Andrew have fest day, um, are very rowdy and um, Malvolio tries to shut them up. Um, famous soliloquies and set pieces such as Lance and his dog from The Two Gentlemen of Rona. Um, extracts from popular productions of that year um, would be reprised and old Vic favourites such as uh, Sybil and Russell Thorndike if they were playing somewhere else on the night of the birthday festival would make a dash across London as soon as the curtain came down on the show that they were in so that they could do a turn at the Old Vic at the end of the night. Uh, on the day of the birthday festival, queues for um, the unreserved seats in the gallery would start early in the morning. So some people actually ended up spending almost the entire day at the theatre, either outside queuing, eating in the cafe, uh, or finally actually enjoying the show. So a whole set of traditions, as I say, for the birthday festival evolved. Um, but the, the, the main one that we were able to uh, um, use this year is um, handing out rosemary, uh, rosemary for remembrance, as Ophelia tells us. Um, and um, that, that tradition we did uh, manage to keep this uh, year. OK, after Bayliss's death in 1937, Shakespeare's birthday became more of a party, which is what it is um, today. Um, and, and usually there's a guest of honour um, from the cast of whatever's playing um, at the Old Vic um, and um, they, they would cut the cake and, and toast Shakespeare, often turning up in full costume. Uh, for example, we have pictures of, in 1954, Michael Horden um, dressed as, as Prospero in tremendous robes when he um, proposed the, the toast. Um, this year, uh, President Nicholas Grace um, proposed the toast, um, but um, he wasn't wearing any robes. But anyway. 
Okay, so some facts about um, Sarah Siddons, the Shakespearean. Um, so she was born at Campbell, um, so she was part of a major theatre dynasty, and she often acted um, opposite her brother, John Philip uh, Campbell. She was tall, she was statuesque, and she had expressive eyes. I hope you can see um, expressive eyes in, um, in this picture. Um, how you would ever see her expressive eyes um, from the back of the two um, legitimate theatres at the time, Drury Lane or Covent Garden is beyond me, but I think those are um, expressive eyes. She was known particularly um, for her tragedy roles, especially those that featured tragic, especially wronged um, mothers. Um, <laughs> this was in part because this was a role she played off stage. Um, uh, she had seven children, but only two survived her. And her marriage to William Siddons, a philanderer who was very happy to live off his famous wife's earning. Did, well, it just did not turn um, well. And after 30 years, they actually um, separated. The relationship began when Siddons was around the age of 15. Um, so uh, rather young by um, today's standards. And she married him despite parental opposition in 1773 when she was only aged 18. Um, Siddons' first appearance um, in London for Garrick um, uh, at the Drury Lane Theatre was, a, was actually a, a total disaster, but she spent some time then honing um, her skill in the provinces, and she uh, rose to become uh, very famous and um, uh, a celebrity and um, a star, and, and that picture um, shows her, I think, as a great um, beauty. In terms of her acting, her approach to performance included, very unusually for the time, making sense of her character by engaging with the whole script of a play, so really thinking through what her character was doing. And during performances of King John, in which she was famous for her constance, um, she would sit with her dressing room door open so that she could hear the play as it progressed to help her get rid ready for her big scene. Um, so uh, she would listen as Constance's young son Arthur was threatened with blinding um, and jumps um, falls to his death um, while trying to escape from his wicked uncle King John. And then Constance, Constance runs mad with grief um, for his death. So um, there is a Lillian Bayliss anecdote here. Um, she commented to Sybil Thorndike um, when um, Thorndike was playing the role that she thought um, the role must be very um, therapeutic and that she would like, <laughs> Bayliss would like to play the scene. And um, as it says here, get rid of lots of chokes and tearing hair that I have inside me. Um, Siddons was most famous for her portrayal of Lady Macbeth. Um, here she's looking uh, very uh, menacing. Um, and I think it's worth bearing in mind that uh, Lady Macbeth was a woman regicide um, and Siddons was performing at a time when many in England were watching in, in horror um, as regicide was being carried out um, courtesy of the French Revolution across the Channel. Um, Siddons played the role of Lady Macbeth many times, um, often when she was visibly pregnant, um, and that suggests a very different reading um, from one that is quite popular today as playing the Macbeths as, as childness and um, partly uh, driven in their actions by their anguish over their childlessness. Siddons very consciously tried to avoid the fiend-like queen approach, which of course is Malcolm's view of Lady Macbeth. And, and in, in, instead she stressed that it was Lady Macbeth's conjugal love um, which created the ambition that she had for Macbeth. And that led her to goad him towards regicide um, once the murder was committed, the murder of Duncan, um, Siddons' Lady Macbeth um, then collapsed with remorse. Um, and uh, this, this is her during the, the um, uh, sleepwalking scene, I think. Um, and a, a very essentialised version of kind of feminine weakness um, took over. She was so famous in this role that um, in 1812, when, when she played it for her farewell performance, the audience refused to allow the play to continue after the end of the sleepwalking scene. Um, and instead, um, the play had to be stopped. And um, eventually the curtain reopened with Siddons on stage in her own clothes. And she made a very fa emotional farewell speech um, to, the perform uh, to, to the audience. Sarah Siddons also played um, Hamlet several times over three decades, but always in the provinces, not, not in London. 
Um, in London, um, it was her brother, um, John Philip Campbell, who played Hamlet. But when um, Siddons played Hamlet, uh, her brother, uh, John Philip Campbell, played Laertes. Um, Siddons was um, famous for intense, majestic acting, which um, used neoclassical ideas of posing and, remote, and romantic emotional um, force. And um, this is an illustration of her in another of the, the kind of famous roles that she was associated with, which um, is Catherine of Aragon um, in Shakespeare's Henry VIII, um, the play that was on when the globe burnt down um, in 1613, if you remember, um, Wadding from uh, Cannon uh, got stuck in the roof, uh, the thatch of the roof, and that's why the globe burnt down. Um, Siddons told Samuel Johnson that Catherine was her favorite role. Um, and um, I just wonder slightly if, Siddons loved this role in part because Catherine was being divorced against her will, um, but Siddons slightly um, perhaps wanted her husband um, to divorce her. However, it's 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 classic Siddons really um, uh, because it's the wronged woman being dignified and, and uh, being under a, a, a lot of pressure. Um, and um, I, what I can't share with you here is that Nicholas actually um, read a, a, one of her famous speeches, one of Catherine's famous speeches from 2-4. Um, this is one of the sections which is indubitably by Shakespeare. Um, much of the play is co-written with John Fletcher. Um, when Catherine was being tried um, because Henry wants to divorce her. Um, and this, the speech is very much, um, uh, you know, a, a plea for... Um, uh, consideration towards someone who is a foreigner in England. Um, she's obviously um, Catherine of Aragon from Aragon is Spanish um, and, and asking what she has done wrong. It's a very, very similar kind of um, uh, territory to Hermione in Winter's Tale. Speaks of being a stranger in a land that is seeking to persecute her, feeling alone and yet not having done um, anything wrong. And Nicholas read the, the speech beautifully, but there was a great um, uh, kind of appropriateness in him reading this speech because um, the, the person who is opposing Catherine Larrigan is Cardinal Wolsey. And um, Nicholas actually used Wolsey's um, speech about being how he should have been loyal to his God rather than his king. And Nicholas used that speech um, uh, for his audition to get into uh, acting academy. Okay, so Sarah Siddons died in 1831 in London, and she's interred in St. Mary's of Paddington Green. Um, and if you would like to go there sometime, what you can do is a, a kind of Siddons triathlon. Um, in, the, in the graveyard, Siddons gravestone is one of the few that is well preserved, and it remains in good condition um, beneath a wrought iron canopy. There's a little bit of erosion um, and the modern addition of a protective um, cage. 5,000 people attended um, Siddons' funeral. Um, and, uh, that's that's um, very impressive. But you can move from the grave into the church, and that's where you get the tablet, um, which is in her memory. And as you walk um, to the church from the nearest tube station, you pass Siddons' um, statue. Um, and um, I feel I should mention that this has um, recently um, been restored uh, uh, because for a while she had lost her nose. Anyway, it was um, a, an extraordinary event. It was lovely to see people face to face after such a long time. And as I say, we're very, very grateful to everyone at St Mary's um, in Paddington Green for um, hosting um, the event. And for those of you who weren't able to get there, I do recommend that at some time you go out there and um, do do the Siddons um, uh, trail and um, particularly uh, pause and look at the restored um, statue. Okay, thank you.